Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of My Beat Goes On. As always, my name is Chris, and I'll be your host today. And today, we are finishing up our series on the stages of congestive heart failure. Today is going to be congestive heart failure stage D, also known as end-stage heart failure. So what is stage D heart failure? This is when a person will have advanced heart failure symptoms where treatment does not help. This doesn't mean that your treatment won't make it mildly better or a little bit better, but it means your symptoms really don't go away. And those are the symptoms like the shortness of breath, the edema, uh, stuff like that. It just doesn't go away for you. So this obviously must be diagnosed by a doctor. And stage D, as I said before, is also known as end-stage heart failure. And the reason it's called end-stage heart failure is because of these uh, treatment options, which you're going to have all your other treatments options from stage A to C if you're on them, but they might actually change here based on your medical needs and what your doctor thinks will be best for you, and for in preparation and possibly of some of these upcoming surgeries. So stage D treatment, you have inotropic therapy, which is continuous intravenous medication that help the heart pump stronger. So this is going to be where you'll probably end up getting like a PIC line, which is a peripheral, peripherally inserted central catheter. And that'll go probably into your upper arm, which uh, the tip of it ends right outside of your heart. Typically, it's where it ends. And it'll be used for a continuous medication. Uh, you could also be looking at a left ventricular assistive device, also called LVAD or LVAD. Um, that's one option here. And usually that's a holdover for the most part for a transplant, but it's also for people that might not be eligible for a transplant to help them actually live a longer, better life. Uh, we'll have a full episode on those on this later because this is something eventually a lot of people are going to have to decide if they want or not. Uh, you'll be evaluated for a heart transplant, which I'm going to have an episode on that at some point, but I'm not exactly sure right now of all the criteria that you have to meet for that but from what I hear it's a lengthy process and you know it takes a bit of time so you might have to do that and then um, at worst you might just have to look at palliative or hospice care which would be your end of life care uh, some of these decisions you have to make in this stage they are a lot more difficult than the other stages uh, the other stages obviously are mostly just medication choices lifestyle changes this is kind of when all that doesn't really necessarily help you. It might help you not get worse or feel worse on certain days, but it's not going to help you anymore. So you have some difficult decisions on what you want to do. Um, any family or friends that are listening to this or you want to listen to this, make sure that they need to be supportive no matter what you choose. Because sometimes end-of-life care is what somebody wants, and it may seem like they're giving up, but they're not. Uh, like I say at the end here, choosing palliative or hospice care is not giving up. You know, that's a choice we all have to make. And if you make that choice, then everybody, including myself, does and should support you. Uh, make your decision on what you want based on what you want. Not necessarily, don't go through all these surgeries if that's what your family wants. But you don't want it. So make sure your decision is based on what you want. Uh, research the pros and cons of each decision. You know, you want to see how is this going to be good for me in the long run compared to something else in the long run, or am I going to go through a whole bunch of pain and complications just to end up in the same spot that I'm going to be anyway. So make sure you research pros and cons so you can make an informed decision. And attempt to find others that have made the same decision. It's good to see what other people's experiences were just so you can kind of know what you're looking forward to uh, moving forward with any decision that you want to make. One thing you need to be prepared for is handling rejection. Um, be prepared not to qualify for an LVAD or transplant surgery, as sometimes these are restrictive. Uh, they have certain criteria you have to meet, and if you don't meet it, then you're kind of just out of luck, unless some new technology comes up, which, you know, I don't put that past anything these days, but, you know, at that point in time, you may not qualify. Uh, for coping, I say cope however you want to. 
Uh, don't let anybody tell you that you've been too sad for too long. Don't let anybody tell you you seem too happy for no reason. Uh, you're coping. Do what you got to do. It's your decision. It's your life. Um, you're the one that has to deal with this. So whatever you got to do, you do it. Uh, this is a good time to make sure you have a power of attorney and your will is up to date. You definitely want people to know what you want for end of life. And you don't want people fighting afterwards over all your stuff. You know, you want it to be very clear, make it easier for you at the end of life, make it easier for your family after you pass on. So that's something just to keep in mind. Um, I would suggest if you've been rejected to enroll in either palliative care or hospice, they're going to make, you know, your transition from this life to the next a whole lot, hopefully less painful and a little bit easier for you. And last, you definitely want to enjoy the days that you have the best that you can. I understand everybody, including myself, would probably go through some form of depression. But at this point, you know, you're looking probably at a limited number of months or years. So you definitely want to make the best of it. You know, enjoy the time with your friends and family. Cross a few things off your bucket list if you can. You know, just enjoy your days. And lastly, I say keep fighting because you never know what tomorrow holds. You know, we read about miracles happening. We read about new technology coming out. We read about different things that can happen. You know, there's all types of stuff that can happen, so you never know what tomorrow holds. So even though it seems not good or maybe gets you down, you know, that doesn't mean you can't keep on fighting till the very end. Uh, some of the questions to ask your doctor uh, the first one, am I in stage D heart failure? Chances are they'll probably not tell you. Um, I've noticed a lot of doctors don't really get into the stages, but it's good to know where you're at just so you know what treatment options you should be looking forward to. Uh, am I eligible for an LVAD? You know, bring that up. They'll probably, I would assume they would bring that up to you too if that's something they thought you needed. But you can always ask them even beforehand, Am I eligible and what do I need to do to stay eligible? Uh, how do I become eligible for a heart transplant? That's something that they might not be able to go over with you. So I'm not sure if a standard cardiologist or a special like transplant team or heart failure clinic would have more knowledge on this, but you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. How will I know if I need continuous IV medications? You know, is there something I should be looking for? Am I always dizzy when I stand up? Um, is my blood pressure readings always going to be high, low? You know, just ask them so that you can stay on top of your health. Uh, you can ask them if you could have a palliative care or a hospice consult. And the consult does not mean that you are enrolling for it. All it means is that you're going to talk to a representative from one of these groups, and they are going to tell you about the services they offer and how everything plays out so that you know and even if you don't choose to do it at that time, at least you'll know which each of one of these um, offers for you so that when the time does come, you kind of have a more informed decision. It'll make you a little bit easier to decide which one you want to do. You can ask your doctor, what is the difference between palliative care and hospice? Because they are both different. I'm not going to get into that, but we'll have an episode on that at some point. But... There are differences between them, so it's good to know the differences so you know which one might be a better route for you. Uh, you Again, like I said on the last episode, you want to know how to fill out a power of attorney, so ask them about that. Uh, you want to know wh how and where do you fill out a will if you don't have one or how to update it. Um, are there any support groups you recommend? Because it's good to you know be around people that can understand what you're going through and help lift you up through your tough days. You can ask if there's any support groups for your family that you recommend. Because sometimes they don't totally understand coming from you, or they might view you differently. And just hearing it from an outside third party might help them understand or recognize a little bit more what you're going through. Than it. And it's not just you, it's everybody out there that has this condition. Next, you can ask, do you have any recommendations that will help me have more quality days rather than quantity? So this is something I think is kind of important because you want to know how can I feel better for the most amount of days instead of being alive longer and feeling like garbage. You know, if that's something you want, ask that question because 
You know, quality days to me are more important than quantity. If you want to, you can ask how you're going to die. You know, some people want to know, is it going to be my heart stops? Am I going to feel like I'm drowning? You know, it's one of those, we all want to know the answer, but in, we also don't want to know the answer. So, like I say here, don't ask any questions. You aren't prepared for an honest answer because if you ask it, your doctor's probably going to give you the blunt truth. So, you know, sometimes knowing how you're going to die might help you swing towards the hospice or palliative care because they're going to make that transition less painful and easier for you. So, you know, it's not always bad to know these answers, but, you know, it's obviously not very fun to know them either. But that's all I got for you today. Um, end stage heart failure, it's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of things in it, like the transplant, LVAD, IV medications, all the stuff that comes with that. So we're going to have expansion episodes on that. But for now, this is just the basics to help you understand if you are possibly in stage D or end stage and what kind of treatments you should be looking for or discussing with your doctor. That way, you can kind of keep on top of that. And if there's something your doctor hasn't brought up, you can bring it up to them just to see what their standpoint is on it. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like the video, leave a comment, leave questions, let me know what you want to hear about, all that good stuff. You know, that stuff really does help us grow as a channel and we'll grow our heart failure community so we have more and more people that we can lean on and get support from. And as always, the link to our website and congestive heart failure support group will be in the episode description, so make sure you check that out if you want to join that. Uh, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications again. That's just so you don't ever miss a video. And until next time, keep on smiling and take care of yourself.